morning and good afternoon to all our reviewers around the world. With the recent success of the first session of QTM webinar, we bring you the second edition entitled Qatar, your safest touristic destination. Since Qatar continues to lead as the safest country in the world, the government prepares to re-establish the tourism industry and the plans for an economic rebound recognizing the fact that Qatar has proven to be remarkably resilient to crisis. In today's session, our speakers will help us understand more of Qatar's initiatives, developments, and the future of its tourism. We are delighted to have been joined today by Qatar's thought leaders, Mr. Ahmed Laubaydi from Qatar National Tourism Council, Dr. Khaled Hassan Naini from Qatar Hospitality, and engineer Jason Tilfa from Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy. To all our attendees, there will be presentations done by our panelists, so you are muted, but you may type your questions in the Q&A box, which will be addressed at the end of all presentations. And now to formally open our session, we are extremely honored to welcome our first speaker, Mr. Ahmed Laubaydi, Qatar National Tourism Council's Head of Exhibitions to discuss Qatar's current tourism state and the plans for recovery. Mr. Ahmad, the virtual floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Lara. Can you share the presentation or should I share it from my end? Can you share it, please, Mr. Ahmad? I already assigned you as a host, okay. so it's better to share it from your screen. Well, assalamu uh, alaikum, good afternoon, good morning or good afternoon and good evening to some of uh, our friends, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, uh, hope you are all well and healthy. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Next Fairs and uh, the Qatar Travel Mart team for uh, putting all these efforts to organize uh, such a, uh, hopefully a well-achieved uh, webinar. It's our pleasure. Uh, Thank you. I'm delighted to, to speak to you uh, today briefly about uh, Qatar business events sector and uh, the measure uh, that the government is taking uh, to open up back for the business. Well, uh, just a short brief on the achievement on uh, 2019. Uh, we welcomed the 2.1 uh, <coughs> which is, uh, shows an increase of a 17% since uh, the 2018 period. In January and February, we witnessed a growth of uh, 41% and uh, 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 respectively 23% in the visitors of number, according to the half of the million uh, visitors. Uh, the state of uh, Doha port uh, ships in 2018-2019 season had uh, 44 calls, which is a 100% increase uh, compared to the previous uh, season. Uh, the cruise visitors also uh, in the season grow 110% um, come over uh, the season comparing to 2017-2018. Uh, the hospitality sector, um, during the 2019, uh, the tourism, sector had the growth on increasing the number of uh, properties uh, available um, uh, for tourism. Um, we had a number of 134 uh, total of new properties and 103 under development. The hospitality sector continues to win uh, a number of achievement, which we were uh, the best in the Middle East uh, guest experience um, as per orally. And as per this STR reports in the mid-January of 2020 shows uh, a significant impo um, uh, improvement in the hotel sector. Um, so Doha is becoming one of the best uh, five markets in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, well, uh, the, the business events, uh, where is it going and um, what's going to be the future of business events in Qatar? Uh, Currently, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the subsequent of, uh, of the lockdown uh, affected our uh, business events um, in Qatar and affected the growth. Uh, but uh, prior to the lockdown sector, the, the, the sector actually grew by 54% over the last uh, five years. 
through the beginning uh, together diverse industries so we are currently looking at uh, curating the business events experience we are targeting uh, the conferences and the business events my sector depending on our industries and the governmental growth um, can you go to the next one please sure seven Okay, uh, in 2019, we, the business events, we had a stable, uh, encouraging business environment, which offers, uh, as I mentioned, a variable curated investment climate. Uh, the business events helps to attract international experiences uh, to Qatar by uh, joining forces with uh, establishing a new uh, associations local associations in qatar with attracting the international uh, business associations to come and establish here in qatar so the next please uh, where we are and uh, what we are uh, what are our measures um, to tackle and to open up uh, back our business uh, an effective uh, tracking and the health hygiene protocols uh, and service offerings to continue to involve the responsible to have a change in the situation on the ground. Uh, we are employing an approach for reopening events uh, services uh, based on the guidelines by the Ministry of uh, Public Health and the Supreme Committee uh, for Crisis Management. Uh, Qatar remains safe, a secure uh, destination and continues to be ranked uh, as the safest country in the world according to the 2020 NIMBYO Crime Index. Visitors entering Qatar can be assured of safe and, and seamless experience. Uh, we offer the best class experience routed uh, with excellence uh, for business clients and business new for, to make uh, an environment to, for new friends and for new business opportunities. The next slide, please, Laura. As we prepare to welcome the guests uh, back to, uh, to the country, Qatar uh, to National Tourism uh, Council, we launched a program called Qatar Clean, and it's an initiative um, that we worked on it with the Ministry in the collaboration with the Ministry of Public Health. Uh, the, the program puts into place uh, more string, uh, straightened uh, standards in order for the business to reopen. Uh, certification of the properties, so we were able to certify 97 hotels uh, to be open uh, for the business and to accommodate uh, tourists. This certification is being introduced in the hospitality sector and expected to be rolled out across the sector, including uh, retail, culture, uh, transport and time. Next please. Hello. Uh, as Qatar entering the phase three, or actually we are in the middle of uh, phase three uh, to uh, remove the restrictions, uh, citizens and holders of valid residence permit are able to return uh, to the country. These are the safety measures will remain in place uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay, Laura. Uh, the coronavirus, uh, as you all may know, um, pandemic has, present, has uh, presented the opportunity for the sector. It was a time for us to, uh, what we first did is like really communicate uh, with our uh, stakeholders, with our friends and people here uh, to see what we can do. And uh, it was a period for us to replan and to rethink our strategies. So uh, Qatar National uh, Tourism Council uh, places a premium internship supporting partners like uh, Qatar Business Incubation uh, Center, uh, the Qatar Development Bank. Uh, we, we established uh, a new uh, MOUs uh, with the Jasur Institute and Stanton University, uh, Hamad bin Khalifa University to rebuild the capacity and to re-encourage the, uh, the re-involvement of the sector. Uh, the lockdown encouraged retail, retail, the hospitality, as well as the cultural uh, institution to, in, to introduce like a new online offering and offline uh, consumer. 
Uh, as we will begin gradually to embrace from the lockdown, uh, we are planning a number of initiatives uh, to remind the sector uh, about uh, our incentive uh, schemes and our offerings uh, in the industry. Uh, the, exhibition, uh, the exhibitions and conferences are salted to resume uh, by the fourth stage, with, which is in uh, at September 1st, uh, hopefully two weeks from now. Uh, our upcoming uh, exhibition uh, will be guided and determined uh, by um, international standards such as the UFI, the UFI, or the ICA. And uh, we are really looking forward uh, to re reopen uh, our country and uh, our industry for the business. And uh, we are happy to answer any questions that you have on a later stage. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much, Mr. Ahmad, for that very informative presentation. Uh, however, before we move on to our next speaker, can you please tell us more, uh, where is the business events industry heading post-COVID-19? Uh, the business events in Qatar, it's a, it's a, it's a pillar. It's, it's a pillar for the industry. Uh, through a host of services and, and incentives, we focus on attracting events, uh, exhibitions, and conferences which, match, which matches our country's growth. Uh, let's see, uh, the main focus now will be on uh, the medical, uh, medical, uh, absolutely on the pharmaceutical and medical conferences. Uh, educational part, uh, oil and gas industry, arts and music. Uh, those are like the, the main focus on, on the sectors. Uh, while also the business events has a neutrally uh, affected the pandemic uh, and the sequence of the lockdown, we anticipate uh, a slow return on the path. Uh, so we are looking on the first show that we will have, hopefully here will be like uh, uh, the here uh, fa Arabian fashion, which will be at the end of uh, October, and Millipol, uh, and some other uh, uh, conferences here. Mr. Ahmad, what are the other preparations and welcoming the world again to Qatar? Uh, the added preparations, uh, as you can see, uh, for, first of all, the, con the country uh, it's, it's been ranked the safest country in the world. Yes. Uh, Qatar known known for its uh, excellence in services. Uh, we, we, we prioritize in del uh, delivering the safety, the stellar experience to our delegates and visitors. With a broad, with a broad range of uh, cultural activities uh, to, to, enhance your, uh, to enhance the experience of the conference and the businessmen coming to the country. Sorry, just to include, like as a customer, as a customer to uh, to the journey illustrated, uh, our award, uh, award-winning national airlines, Qatar Airways, as well, um, it's a, it's a, and and uh, Hamad International Airport yes. employees uh, the latest and uh, the latest technologies and the highest procedure to take in place to assure the travelers that are having every safety uh, precautions and, and measures taken for them to, to travel. Great initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad, for addressing our questions and for sharing your insights. Moving on, our next speaker is Dr. Khaled Hassan al naimi Qatar Hospitality's Manager of Technical Development, who will present Qatar's hospitality sector and Qatar's ongoing projects. Dr. Khaled, we are all ears. Hi, uh, first of all, uh, thank you uh, for inviting Qatar Hospitality uh, to be the part of uh, today's webinar. Uh, Qatar uh, Travel Market uh, is an outstanding uh, platform. Uh, this exhibition will aim to support these and strengthening the competitiveness of uh, tourism industry in Qatar. I'd like to take you through one review of the company and we'll start with the short as uh, I told you Qatar, Qatar hospitality uh, is a global hotel owner and operator with a vision to be the leading hospitality organization currently we are expanding nationally uh, with international bringing new markets in line with the growth strategy 
uh, here in the presentation all around the world, uh, we have around uh, 8,000 keys around the world. 4,000 are in Qatar and 4,000 4, are uh, globally, uh, internationally around the world. Um, so as a Qatar flagship, uh, uh, to be one of the world's leading hospitality organization by investing in uh, to create a safe and sustainable environment that will carry the name. Uh, our future aspirations are uh, clear and our performance of bring them to life. We is focusing now uh, on the next strategy target is to have 60 properties by 2026. Uh, uh, Qatar, uh, it, uh, it evolves, it will continue to identify new properties and opportunities uh, uh, to create lasting values. Uh, um, for now, the hotels that are under development and refurbishment, uh, we have Selva Beach Resort. It's one of the, the a new the biggest. We have started uh, soft opening uh, for this uh, property beginning of uh, last month. Um, It's mainly eight as well, with a five-star hotel of 250 keys. Uh, this properties will bring the tourism to a different level in future. Uh, also, one of the main components of this property is the uh, Resort Fall uh, Water Park. It has the 28 uh, slides and attraction that will cater for more tourism and more uh, uh, people to come in future. Uh, the uh, Marriott uh, Gulf Hotel is, uh, as it was shown in the video, but uh, you couldn't see the video. It's uh, the first property of Qatar Hospitality. It was uh, built in 1970s, and now we are renovating this property back uh, to bring it back to life, uh, and it will finish uh, the construction in 2021 next year. Uh, uh, the presentation again now. So we can sure to our you cannot system. you cannot see it no let's start sharing again oh, because we have uh, sure. more than 75 participants so I think they are uh, interested to share uh, to, to see the projects who still like the projects of uh, Qatar hospitalities so as I said uh, before the Doha Marriott uh, hotel is the first uh, property uh, of Qatar Hospitality, it was built into uh, 1970s, and now we are doing a full renovation, uh, full renovation for this property. Uh, it will finish uh, in 2021. Uh, we're bringing back the Marriott to the shape that was before. Uh, the next slide is the Qatar Towers. The Qatar Towers is the new landmark. This will be the landmark of Qatar. Uh, Inspired from the seal of Qatar, this iconic towers uh, has a six stars hotel and a five stars hotel. The five star hotel is 770 rooms, and the six stars hotel is around 132 uh, suites and rooms with a cigar lounge and uh, all other facilities that will uh, cater for new tourism uh, and for new tourists. Uh, it will be a uh, new tourist destination, you know. Uh, another thing, if you can scroll down on the slides also, uh, internationally we have some hotels that are under development and refurbishment. Uh, we have the Carlton Khan in slide number 20. Uh, if you can go to slide number 20. Yes. So this is the uh, intercontinental Carlton Khan. This is also uh, under renovation. Uh, the next slide is the Tazi Palace, Morocco, in Tangier. This is also under renovation. Uh, talking more about uh, tourism, uh, we created in 2017 a company called Qutaifan Island, Qutaifan Projects, which will be the Qutaifan Island North. Uh, 
this island is uh, I don't know can you share the video to people or you cannot in 20 slide 23 I cannot actually you cannot yeah okay mainly mainly this project will bring the tourism to a different level uh, 1.4 million square meter of uh, land uh, will have hotels uh, hospitality hotels, beach clubs, uh, retail areas, uh, uh, residential areas, uh, more than, uh, let's say, also parks, garden, waterfront, uh, residential villas. Uh, this will bring the uh, hospitality and will bring the tourism to a different level in future. So mainly the project components in slide 25, we have hotels, water park, which will be one of the main components in the island, retailed, uh, residential and community facilities uh, and beach club. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Qatar Hospitalities will continue to tie with the National Tourism Council, Qatar Airways and all the uh, Supreme Committee and all other authorities to uh, strengthen the, uh, uh, the tourism in future with, the, with all the entities. Thank you, Dr. Khaled, for that enlightening uh, discussion. Allow me to ask you, please, more about what's the role of Qatar hospitality in the tourism sector of Qatar? As Mr. Ahmed Al-Ubedli told you from the beginning, that hospitality is taking the lead in the tourism in the country. So Qatar hospitality is focusing on uh, I mean, uh, diversif diversification, changing all the type of uh, hotels, uh, resorts. We have different type of hotels, resorts, business hotels uh, to cater all the business, leisure, tourism in the country and cater more international uh, tourists to come to the country. Especially also we have uh, tie with uh, international operators all the time to bring more from the, the uh, international market into Doha. Thank you, Dr. Khaled, uh, for your presentation and uh, for answering our question. Uh, going forward is our last speaker, Engineer Jasim Delfat, Competition Venues Executive Director at the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy, who will talk about the preparations for FIFA 2022. Engineer Jasim, you have our attention. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, uh, Lara. Thank you for giving the Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy the chance to talk to you today. We are super excited to tell oh, you yes. about the latest development that we have for the World Cup 2022 in Qatar. We are 85% uh, ready uh, for the moment uh, to host this great uh, uh, event uh, in the region and on behalf of the Arab world. Inshallah. And uh, in the short time given, I will be just going through the latest developments that we have in the eight stadiums that we are preparing uh, to host the World Cup. They are Khalifa Stadium, Al Janoub Stadium, Education City Stadium, Al Bayt Stadium, Al Thamama Stadium, Al Rayana Stadium, Ras Abud, and Al Hussein. So I'll go through one by one and give you some a glimpse about each one and where we are. Uh, the first one that we have is Khalifa International Stadium, a stadium that everyone uh, remembers. It uh, really has uh, great uh, memories for all the people in the region. Uh, this is uh, located in the heart of Aspire Zone. Uh, it was uh, hosting the opening of the Asian Games in 2006. It was hosting a, a lot of uh, events for the Arabian Gulf Cup. It was recently redeveloped in 2017, hosted the Amir Cup after uh, relaunching in 2018. And after that, also, it uh, hosted the IAF, um, IAAF World Athletics in 2019 and the Club World Cup, uh, FIFA Club World Cup in 2019. It has a 40,000 spectator capacity. Uh, it, 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 it was... Um, uh, uh, an air conditioning technology was uh, put in, in there and uh, uh, all the FIFA requirements that are needed uh, for uh, the World Cup. It's the home of the Qatar national team uh, and it's really, uh, as you can see, it's ready uh, long back to host uh, the games in the World Cup. Uh, 
it's uh, most of the stadiums I'm going to talk about has a very great uh, passion passionate about sustainability. It has uh, great uh, certificates from um, uh, GSAS, uh, and it has really a high standard of sustainability in, in all of them. And one of them is Khalifa International uh, Stadium. Uh, the, it, it, the next stadium that I'm going to talk about would be Al Janoub Stadium that was launched in 2019 in the Amiri Cup final. And it's uh, 40,000 uh, spectators. It was designed by a signature architect, Zuha Hadid. Uh, it's a very uh, iconic in terms of architecture. And it represents uh, the flipping floor, uh, boats, which represents the southern parts of the country, Al Wakra people culture. And it's uh, a very iconic with a park. Uh, and that park is already launched for the public to enjoy since the sport day. And it's, uh, it's ready to host again the games for uh, the World uh, Cup. Uh, the third stadium that I'm going to talk about is, uh, will be Education City Stadium, which was launched uh, last uh, June. And it's again one of the stadiums that became ready. It's located in Education City Master Plan which would ideally serve the needs of uh, the knowledge hub in Qatar, which is Education City. Uh, it would have two schools uh, incorporated in it, which would be launched, uh, opened even before the World Cup as a great legacy that would be kept for uh, people uh, to, to really enjoy in Education City. Plus, the sport complex that would be there would be used by both educational and community sectors in Education City and serve the community. It's uh, located, as you could see from the photo, uh, adjacent to the uh, world-class golf course, a beautiful one that is already launched in Education City, called the Education City Golf uh, Club. The, it's 40,000 spectators. It would be reduced after the World Cup to 25,000, and uh, the, the, the seats would be donated to uh, 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 countries that would uh, like to uh, develop or grow or uh, uh, try to enhance their sport capabilities. Uh, this is uh, again one of the stadiums that you would see um, uh, soon having uh, some official games that, uh, with, the, with the agenda that we have now in Qatar. A uh, very uh, big agenda of, um, of events that will be coming uh, later this year. Uh, the, th the, the third stadium I'm going to talk about, or the fourth stadium, sorry, is Al Rayyan Stadium. Al Rayyan Stadium, uh, located uh, close uh, to uh, uh, Qatar Mall, was built, uh, was actually uh, rebuilt again after uh, the old uh, Rayyan Stadiums, and it's now uh, fitting the uh, FIFA requirements. It's almost complete, it's 98% complete. We're on the final testing and commissioning and working with the local authorities, doing some tests before integrating the stadiums soon this year. It's a 40,000 uh, seats stadiums that would be uh, again reduced to 20,000 that would be contributed to, uh, uh, to some of the friends in other countries uh, that would be developing in, in sport. It's, it's going to be the home uh, stadiums of uh, Rayan uh, Club as a great legacy that would be kept in there. There are a lot of uh, running tracks, cyclings, uh, and, and uh, training sites uh, in the precincts around the stadiums, which makes it uh, a perfect place. The, the facade of this building represents some uh, architectural patterns from the upper local uh, uh, architecture which makes it really uh, blend and belong to this land uh, in Qatar. Uh, the, the, uh, the next uh, stadium I'm going to talk about is Al Bayt Stadium. And when you talk about Al Bayt Stadiums, when you are driving to the lovely city of Al Khor, the first iconic architecture that, you would, that would come to your mind is really that beautiful uh, structure that's coming from the local culture. It's, uh, we call it uh, a patent or the Beit al which which really, really um, uh, attract the attention of anyone that drive in, 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 in. Just when you are entering to that city, you would immediately see that lovely stadium that will have the opening of the World Cup, inshallah, in 2022 uh, in Qatar. 
and uh, would be hosting uh, games uh, uh, all the way uh, to the quarter final. Uh, it is it is again uh, almost wrapped up it's in the final stage of testing and commissioning and uh, getting the local uh, authorities and doing some test games before integrating these stadiums later this year and it's almost done and ready uh, the the park was launched in the sport day and it's ready for the enjoyment of the community it's it's, it's almost uh, similar to the aspire park and has uh, similar features, lake, uh, cycling areas, uh, walk, walkways, training sites, and uh, restaurants, uh, coffee shops that are uh, over there for the community to enjoy. As a great legacy that comes uh, alive before even the World Cup starts. And that's what makes the excitement about uh, uh, this project. Uh, next uh, stadium is, uh, at Thumama Stadium, uh, or we could call it the Gahfir. And again, it's coming from uh, a great uh, local architect, uh, famous architect uh, called Ibrahim Al Jada, who came up with uh, this uh, idea of Al Gahfir. And Al Gahfir is, is, uh, represents uh, a, a local cloth that is uh, very famous in Qatar. In fact, it's really even uh, uh, something that is. Uh, uh, exchange with other cultures that use the same uh, thing in different ways. So this is also one of the stadiums that would be launched next year. It is in uh, uh, more than 80% in, in terms of completion. Uh, if you drive there, you would see uh, that's what you're going to see in the picture. It's, it's almost uh, as a shape uh, already completed. The seats are installed and, and uh, the facade is completed and, and, and in the training sites outside are, are ready uh, uh, to, to, to be uh, utilized. So uh, th this is, would be a 40,000 seats. It would be having a great legacy after then, and then it will be adding to have some of the uh, medicine centers and some of the uses that would be uh, over there. There will be a lot of training sites in the precincts. There will be walkways and there will be cycling path for the community to enjoy once it's ready next year. Uh, it's uh, the, the next stadium that I'll be talking about is Ras Abud Stadium, and here is a story, a great story of a stadium that is done to meet to meet the capacity required during the World Cup. But then you would be able just to uh, use these containers that are really making these stadiums uh, together, where they are used during the uh, the games, and then after the games it would be used in the uh, uh, economical development in the country and, the, and, the, and, and the, the stadium would be diminished after the, the, the games and would be used uh, elsewhere. It's a 40,000 uh, uh, seat uh, stadium. It would be ready next year. It's in a very good progress at the moment. If you drive around in the Ras Abud area, you would see uh, the development is, is getting along with, uh, with, with the seats being installed and the structures being put in. Uh, in there. Uh, the next, uh, this, is, this is a photo that was taken recently about the installations of uh, these uh, structures the, 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 uh, that's making Ras Abud stadiums together. Uh, the, the last stadium that I'll be talking about is Lusail Stadium in the great city of Lusail, which is really uh, 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 the most developing uh, city now in Qatar and has a, a, uh, exciting projects uh, around it. It's 80,000 uh, seat uh, stadiums that would be hosting the final of the World Cup. It is, uh, again, it's really going uh, very fast and uh, hopefully will be, uh, will be completed in 2021 next year and will be launched and will be ready uh, to host uh, the games in 2022. Uh, this is uh, a photo that was taken to the stadium recently and as, as you're driving around you would see that there is a lot of uh, really activities happening uh, to make it uh, happen. Uh, this is a quick uh, really uh, view about the stadiums that we're working on uh, to make uh, the event one of the most exciting and one of the most successful and uh, most amazing uh, World Cup that happened ever in the history. 
Uh, thank you very much for uh, listening, and I will be more than happy to answer any questions now. Thank yeah. you, Angelisha. Uh, yes, uh, actually, it's so exciting uh, to hear and to see this wonderful progress. Before we proceed to the Q and A portion with our uh, participants, allow me, please, to ask you: aside from making sure that the stadiums are completed before 2022. What are the other preparations of Supreme Committee to communicate the readiness of Qatar to host fans all over the world for FIFA 2022? As, as apparent and as anyone can see, uh, the mass developments, the progress, the booming that's happening in upgrading the highways, uh, the expansion that's happening to uh, uh, Hamad International Airport, uh, to, uh, you could see also the terminal services that are really in preparations uh, to receive people. You would see the Lucille city developments that's really also uh, adding to the uh, uh, preparation required to receive the fans in, in Qatar. Uh, we will be having cruise ships uh, also to support the accommodations that would be required uh, during the World Cup. Uh, we have uh, uh, team villages that would be also hosting the teams uh, during their uh, stay in, in Qatar. A lot of uh, hotels, a lot of developments is happening. Uh, a lot of things is going on here uh, to, to make it ready. A state of art uh, Doha Metro, which is uh, already launched, is, is ready to receive people and make their trips very uh, successful and uh, very smooth from a stadium to a stadium. It's the first time in the world where you could enjoy two games in the same day, uh, going from uh, far stadium to another far stadiums, and you could enjoy easily uh, being there for two matches uh, during the day. And, and that's going to happen because of this great infrastructure that is developed in Qatar to receive people. There will be dedicated buses, which we are working on, that will be taking the fans from place to place. It would be a lot of excitement for people to enjoy in Qatar when they come in 2022. Engineer Jassam, what's your message to worldwide football fans waiting for that tournament? Well, uh, we are excited to see you in 2022 in Doha. Uh, we are uh, really would like, uh, this is uh, one, uh, we promise that this is, would be one of the best and the most unique FIFA World Cup that happened ever. And uh, we would come, would like to welcome uh, all people from all over the world to enjoy the excitements in 2022, enjoy the games, enjoy the football uh, family, and uh, uh, enjoy Qatar, Qatar, uh, uh, best place in the world, I would say. <laughs> Exactly. Thank you, Engineer Jassim, for giving us all this information and for this wonderful presentation. Uh, to all our participants, we are now ready to answer your questions. Uh, we have the first question, uh, which is addressed to uh, Dr. Khaled. Dr. Khaled, we have a question for you. Does Qatara collaborate with destination management companies? Uh, it is. Uh, thank you for this question. It's a very uh, good question. It's an important one. Uh, first of all, Qatar Hospitality is an asset uh, development uh, company. We develop uh, hotels and we work with the operators uh, through these hotels. Um, I think uh, if I can uh, maybe uh, invite Mr. Ahmed al Ubaidli to uh, to also uh, come and uh, answer this question because we work closely with the QTC uh, with regards to the destination management all the time. Yes, Mr. Ahmed. Well, uh, the National Tourism Council, uh, we are uh, the regulators um, in this regards of the sector uh, and the destination management companies uh, they're of course a private private company if there are any probably initiatives uh, that um, has an involvement uh, jointly with the, with the destination management company it would be on a on a special project uh, let's say if we have the Qatar summer festival or, uh, it was happening in the previous years that we had to go to uh, a specific destination management companies or to launch the, the DAO projects or uh, 
with the redevelopment of the whole uh, sea line and al Udaid area, you need the destination management companies and private sectors uh, to to invest and to uh, to take in hand and to manage and to operate uh, these initiatives. Uh, we are the, as the regulators. We we will set up the standards. We will guide you. Uh, if there are any uh, needs required in uh, the governmental communications, we can aid and assist. But then it's more beneficial uh, for the private sector. Uh, actually, they are the one who takes then uh, the lead and to operate and to manage these facilities. Mr. Ahmad, we have another question for you, actually. How is the QMTC collaborating with other tourism bodies? Uh, this is a very, it's a very wide uh, question. Uh, we are uh, like, if you can be more specific, but uh, we're definitely maybe, open. We, uh, maybe to, our uh, participant uh, to wants to know with, more about. As a, as a, as a, yes. How are you collaborating no, I, with this embodied to like, promote so. Qatar? Okay, this is this is now a good question. How are we promoting Qatar? We have we are the diamond sponsors with the uh, UFI, who are uh, the global exhibitions uh, associations. Yes. Uh, we have a diamond sponsorship with them, as you know, uh, Laura, because maybe you are more involved for the next uh, five years. Yes. Which this is uh, the only uh, Middle Eastern uh, destination or country that uh, has this privilege. Uh, also, we are uh, joining forces uh, with ICA, the International Conference and Associations. Uh, we are uh, on constant uh, meetings with them uh, on, the, on their webinars and their social media, and uh, we are presenting them. So, in terms of uh, collaboration with international associations and marketing for Qatar, we are going for the international standards and a well-known uh, organizations to help uh, to promote the country. Uh, in terms of uh, international offices and international representations, uh, well, as you are all aware, or it's mentioned a number of times in the newspaper and the, and the media, we have uh, currently 10 representation, representational offices uh, from America, Italy, China, Russia, uh, Germany, uh, Turkey, uh, and, uh, and several. Uh, those are uh, representational offices and we work with them closely to market and uh, to deliver, uh, to promote Qatar. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. We have a question to engineer Jasser. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Uh, oh, I'll, I'll stop there because I'm going to some other initiatives. Uh, oh, yes, yes, please, please. <laughs> no, please, we would like to, know, to, to hear more about your initiatives. Please, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, for, in, in, in the promotional and how to promote Qatar, I think uh, those uh, are very good, uh, let's say, and solid uh, sources that we are uh, taking care of. and they will uh, stop here. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, Engineer Jassim, what are the safety precautions of the Supreme Committee to guarantee the safety of football fans in 2022? Actually, we're working uh, very uh, closely with the relative authorities in Qatar, and we're working with FIFA and working with international entities. We're working, uh, we're taking the experience that happened in Russia. We're working with, with many entities to ensure that uh, the safety is really met uh, during the event. As you could see that Qatar is one of the safest countries uh, in the world, according to the latest uh, 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 statistics that happened in the world. And uh, we will ensure, and uh, it's not the first time Qatar hosts mega events, uh, sport events in, in particular. A lot of events were hosted by Qatar. Alhamdulillah, was always, uh, the safety was the uh, top, uh, really, uh, 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 top things that we are ensuring for people who would be coming uh, to Qatar all the time. We're working very closely in this. 
We are taking all the precautions, all the measures required to ensure the safety of people during uh, the event. Uh, I have actually a message from uh, Mr. President Cuthbert. Uh, he's the president of the African Tourism Board. This message is addressed to you, Mr. Ahmad saying that it's really an honor and a great opportunity to realize the effort from Qatar within the tourism space. And they are looking forward for a strategic relationship between African Tourism Board and Qatar Tourism Board and QNTC. As I, as I was saying, I'm looking forward uh, for this opportunity and what a great uh, opportunity to have this platform and we uh, achieve, uh, achieve or receive such a request. So well done, Laura. I'm looking forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Uh, hopefully, uh, by the way, President Cuthbert is also supporting uh, our event, QTM Qatar Travel Mart. And hopefully next year, uh, we'll organize face-to-face -face meetings between uh, President Cuthbert and you, Mr. Ahmad. Thank you a lot. Uh, yes. Would you mind sharing the contact? Yeah, definitely, definitely, our pleasure. We'll do for sure. Uh, now, last message from our speakers to our audience. Uh, Mr. Ahmad, what's your last message to our audience? Uh, the last message, uh, I hope, uh, first of all, everyone is healthy and safe. This is uh, my, my personal priority and uh, the country's also high uh, priority. And uh, we are uh, looking forward uh, for September 1st as uh, the fourth stage of releasing uh, the, precautions, the precautions or the measures or reducing the measures for the pandemic COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, looking forward to see you travel on our uh, five-star airlines, Qatar Airways, to accommodate you in our international uh, Hamad International Airport, and to see you at our uh, five stars in luxury, Qatar Hospitality, uh, and the private sector hospitality hotels. Uh, I would like to see you before 2022, uh, Engineer Jassim. <laughs> so, uh, Thank you, Mr. Ahmad. Dr. Khaled. What's your message to our audience? I would like uh, to thank everyone today uh, who attended this uh, panel and uh, like to uh, thank uh, Mr. Ahmed Lebedli and uh, Mr. Jasim Tilfet for all of this. We are working all together. Uh, we have the goal of 2022 and we have a goal beyond that in future, inshallah. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Dr. Khaled. Engineer Jasim. Well, it's a great pleasure today to talk to the tourism sector and we are super excited to have people even before 2022 uh, for the completed stadiums come and enjoy the scene. We will be more than happy through our media platforms and SC in Supreme Committees for Delivery and Legacy to have your requests to come and uh, enjoy uh, a tour uh, to, to these great facilities that are already completed and about to be completed and uh, we'll be more than happy to receive people and we will welcome everyone hopefully in 2022 in uh, safe hands inshallah. Thank you engineer Jasim. Uh, thank you for our participants uh, for throwing valuable questions but due to the uh, short time uh, we need to close the webinar the session. Uh, our sincere gratitude to our esteemed speakers and participants who are with us today. Please stay tuned for the next session, which will be announced shortly across our digital platforms. See you.